crap. Down by the can, you see that? But what is that? Wish. Oh my god. Is it? No way. What is that? I have no friggin' idea. Did you get that on the camera? I, it's recording. Oh my gosh, did you see that? Honestly, I, I wouldn't believe it unless we recorded it. Motorcycles, honey. There's nothing for it. You see what else? What's that? What is that? A tree? No. You moved it, right? Right there. See? Uh huh. Look. There's nobody there. Look at those people. Can't be. There's no Not up in the trees. There's nobody down there no more. See? Early morning at Gettysburg is the best time to see the battlefield, I think. Quiet, serene. But don't be alarmed if you get that I'm not alone feeling. Thousands of men lost their lives in a brutal fashion in the Battle of Gettysburg. It's been rumored for many years that their spirits, at least some of them, are still there today. That might explain the booming paranormal business in the town of Gettysburg. 
But the granddaddy of them all is Mark Nesbitt's Ghost of Gettysburg. When you first walk into their office, you get the feeling of walking into another craft shop. But if you look a little closer, you soon realize why they were voted the number one ghost tour in the world. They literally wrote the book, so why not? We signed up for that night, their famous Carlisle Street Ghost Tour. We're getting ready to go on the Mark Nesbitt Ghost of Gettysburg Tour. There's supposed to be seven of us on the tour, so right now it's just Colin and myself. So if the other ones are brave enough to show up, we'll get underway. Our group is finally formed and we gather in the courtyard to meet Sandy, our guide for the evening. She quickly grabs our attention with a little history lesson, a few ghost stories, and basically what to expect that night. And soon, we're on our way. We stop along the way at different sites and are treated to tidbits of history as we make our way to our destination, Gettysburg College. For an hour and a half, Sandy amazed us with stories of ghost sightings and ghost hauntings, both past and present. From the very beginning, you're hooked. It's part history, part paranormal. And I guarantee you'll be talking about this tour long after it's over. And as the tour wrapped up in the center of Gettysburg, it struck me. When was the last time you saw seven teenagers completely mesmerized without one Xbox? Can you think of a better endorsement? A ghost tour is the perfect ending to your Gettysburg vacation. And that little feeling you get, not being alone, maybe you're not. Do you believe in ghosts? Well, I do now. I'm standing here at the field where the infamous Pickett's Charge took place in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. On that fateful July day in 1863, from the fields behind me, General Lee sent a large Confederate force that stretched a mile across this road to the Union lines, which are behind this camera. It was an ill-fated charge for General Lee, but prior to that specific attack, the 12th New Jersey, which was on the hill behind the camera, neatly positioned and carefully positioned behind a stone wall, was given the order to go forward because there were Confederate sharpshooters in a barn across that field. There's no longer a barn there because the 12th New Jersey, along with the 1st Delaware, burned it and captured 99 Confederates. In any case, during the entire action across Pickett's Charge Field prior to the Pickett's Charge, the men returned to their lines and fought the rest of the battle for that day. When the battle ended, there was chaos everywhere. Thousands of men lie dead on the field from both sides. What happened next? Well, fast forward to about 10 years ago, to about the year 2000, give or take, and one particular evening, we were driving from town in Gettysburg out to a hotel outside of town to meet some friends. As we were driving through, the car got to this point, and there was a very, very low fog across the ground. I got a weird chill about it. I said, man, to the other guys, I said, did you happen to feel this? They said, no, I didn't feel anything. Well, we continued on to the hotel, I met our friends, gave them a time to meet us back at the hotel, and back this way we went. Well, we got back to this point again, and lo and behold, I felt that chill one more time. My friend Phil, my friend Phil, what he was doing was uh, he pulled the car over and he said, let's get out, let's take a look. So we walked to this point. In the dark of night, on a Friday night, on the weekend of Remembrance Day, which is a weekend in November that commemorates Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address every year, there were thousands of soldiers here and about, but not out here and not at this time. It was probably about 9 o'clock at night. We walked to this point, we looked across the field, and we saw five people walking across the field. I remarked to my friends that... They can't be there. They're not supposed to be there. This is, this is a government property after dark. No one goes onto the battlefield. They're going to get us all in trouble. That's what I figured anyway. 
Well, we watched these guys for maybe five, ten minutes, and they were in a walking motion, but they never moved forward. They just stayed in one particular spot. So we looked, and the second guy, there was one man, another man, and then a group of three. The first man seemed to have a rifle on his shoulder as he was walking. The second man seemed to be falling down. And I'm looking at this thing, and what's going on here? And then the, the other three that were separated were walking too, but no one was going forward. You couldn't see their legs. They were in a fog about knee high. So we kept watching, and the three of us saw the exact same thing. What we saw was the middle man falling down over and over and over again. How do you see, why this happened, we don't know, but we all saw it at the same time. So when he fell, we all remarked at the same second. He fell again, he fell again. Well, we went back to the hotel, wide-eyed, a bit scared, and we told everybody that was meeting us there at that time, you're not going to believe what we just saw. And we brought them back here. And about three or four carloads, maybe 20 people, give or take, and they all stood at this point, and we all looked, and they all saw the same thing. To try to go and, to try to go and figure out what that was all about, well, we really don't know to this day. We think we may have seen some ghosts, maybe not. Maybe it was our minds. I can't tell you what it was. But there's a bit more to the story. Hang in there. The story continues. These are the two gentlemen that, with me, were together that specific night during what we think we may have seen. Uh, I would like you to listen to the first-hand account of First Phil and then Dave. Phil? Yeah, we were standing here, and it would appear to be movement out in the field. Uh, some say it was the bushes moving, but the the thing that was so amazing about it is that we all seen the same bush move at the same time doing the same thing. One of the bushes, or the, one of the things that appeared to be a human that was falling down, and Rich yelled 12th New Jersey, and it did like look like one of the bushes had stood up and raised its rifle. What that was, I, I don't know. I, I can't really say. All I can tell you is what we all seen at the same time, and it was very amazing to me. So, Dave? Yeah, it, it was really neat saying that. Um, the first thing that I saw of the five men that, we, that took my eye was there were three of them together. I don't know if they were three stragglers together, if it was remains of a, maybe a color guard or something, but they were together and um, side by side, shoulder to shoulder. And um, it was obviously like they were walking on some rough terrain. Um, they almost looked like they were tripping or falling down. And um, the even more amazing thing was um, when we came back here, we brought some friends, several carloads, about 10 or 15 people or so. And they all saw the same thing too. And when that second trip, I was one of the guys that walked out on the battlefield to, towards those um, men. And Which we weren't supposed to do that night, but we won't tell anybody. No. <laughs> no, we were, no, you're not supposed to be on the battlefield at night, definitely. But we were so intrigued about going out there that uh, to see what was going on, we could never get close to them. I mean, if they were bushes, we would have walked past the bushes, but they always kept a certain distance from us. We could never get up to them, but we could still see them doing the same thing. The, the, um, going through, it's like a moving a loop that was playing over and over. Uh, the same guys falling, the same guys marching, but they weren't going forward, and we could never approach them. So there you have it, two accounts, plus what I said. Thanks. The story doesn't actually end on the fields of Pickett's Charge. The very next evening, one of the other members, after hearing about what had happened with the five men across this field, decided to see for himself. He came out there the following night with his wife and his children, and he came back to me Sunday morning at this particular point where we had a program to commemorate the 12th for the Remembrance Day weekend. And he said to me, Rich, I saw the four men you were talking about. Oh, I said, there wasn't four, there was five. He says, no, I saw four. There was one here, one there, one there, and a straggler at the very end, four men. Well, it turns out that we saw five, he saw four. I've been coming here to dedicate a day to the men of the 12th New Jersey for probably 20 years, and I've never noticed what's written on this monument on this side. Basically, during the Battle of Gettysburg, the 12th New Jersey lost 
120 men. But at the very bottom, it states that after all was said and done, and the men were on their way to future engagements, whatever they may be, a total of nine men were missing and were never found, never returned to their ranks. So do the simple math. The five we saw on that Friday evening and the four they were seen on the following night, a total of nine. Um, how many more people in this town that lost their lives in a horrible way are still trying to get back to their homes, to their families? Well, there's lots of stories about the ghosts of Gettysburg. This has just been one of them. You can decide for yourself whether or not it's a true story or just fabricated in our minds. But to us, it was very true. Did you show yourself to us? Yeah. Could you splash across the water so we could see you walk across the water? It would feel good. sort of uh, uh, equipment you could think of. And down here in this room, 
uh, they, they had this mysterious box. It was over there in the corner on the table. It's not there anymore. And, and, and it was an amazing thing. I was watching this box. It was about this big, and it had two wheels on it. The wheels were connected by a thin piece of tape. And, and, and the wheels just continually went around and around. I was getting dizzy watching these wheels. And then finally, finally, they took the, they stopped the wheels for a moment. And, and they did something to it. And all of a sudden, voices were coming out of the box. They could hear that awful sound, slowly, ever so slowly, coming up the stairs. Eventually, the sound made it to the top of the stairs. It turned the corner. It was now coming through the small bedroom. They could hear the sound, but there was nothing there to see. The more they talked, the more they realized it was supernatural. Something was haunting this house. I have a very sad story, too. I have been searching and searching, trying to find, find my daughter Jenny's spirit. But I'm certain that if I'm going to find her... It's going to be in the cellar. We must go to the cellar. Civilian to die during the battle uh, had been aiding the Union. 
Russian soldiers when a bullet went through two doors, penetrated her heart, came out the front of her body, killed her instantly, a very tragic death. It scarred the rest of the family. The mother was there and witnessed the death. It was the sister's home. The brother was in the building. The soldiers had to try to get the family out of the house under enemy fire. So everyone suffered that day. And it seems like their spirits are still suffering today at the Jenny Wade House. This building is definitely a place you want to seek out when you come here to Gettysburg. We do have nightly tours that take you into these buildings. They're sold separately, the Jenny Wade Tour and the Orphan Tour. If you could go on our midnight tour and spend some time in these buildings with a guest medium. And for those who are fearless, we have a tour called the Ghostly Encounter. Your guide is a ghost. It's a very dramatic presentation, and the actress plays the part of a ghost who has come back from the dead to try to tell you their story. And eventually you end up in the cellar, in the dark, in the night. So if you dare go on any of these tours, you can contact Ghostly Images of Gettysburg by calling 717-334-6296 or 334-1156. And have a good evening. Die. 
sound like cannon fire. And it came to my left, but it sounded really, really, really far away. And it was so forceful that I actually felt like a concussion or something. That was pretty cool. It actually felt like, 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 it was like a concussion. It actually felt like the backblast of, of, of artillery. Because I've been next to artillery when it goes off. Well, casual. It's just wrong. It's just saying you should die. Can you hear that? 